Oh, online vendors, you've dicked us over quite enough. It's time for Hollywood Grump. Hey, everybody, welcome to Hollywood Grump. I am the Grump, a.k.a. the Grinchiest Grinch, a.k.a. Sour McPuss, a.k.a. Old St. Dick. Here on Hollywood Grump, we talk about everything from new and vintage gear, including testing and reviews, to surviving the business of Hollywood, to stuff that just rubs me raw. All through the lens of a man so full of suspense. Before I forget, I want to thank today's sponsors, Ari, Kinoflow, and BNH Photo and Video for supplying all the gear. <laughs> As if. It's me. I pay for all this shit. For all you gear nerds out there, today's episode is shot on a Super Tacomar 55mm f1.8. Anyone who's ever used a Super Tac before knows what a great, great lens it is. It's got a really, really nice soft roll off, no hyper sharpness, so it gives everything a real filmic quality. And in short, I think it really has a timeless look. I got mine on eBay for just over a hundred bucks. If you can find one for around that price, I highly recommend picking one up. Let me know in the comments below how you think this lens looks. And remember, I didn't do any sharpening. My face always looks like the surface of the moon. Okay, you know, here we've had a problem here. Roger, we're copying it, Capcom. Today's episode is going to be pretty short because most of this is common sense. Also, my ungrateful children are expecting Christmas presents this year, so I have to go out and shop. Which is a good segue to this topic, and this applies to more than just cinema gear. It's the holidays, which means the inevitable avalanche of sales flyers and emails from online sellers. Whenever we have a hankering for some new bric-a-brac, most of us likely shop online. And I'm sure most of us do price comparisons from one vendor to another. For all but the most specialized cinema gear, I usually go to Amazon first for a few reasons. One, they usually have what I need. Two, they usually, but not always, have the lowest price. And three, because Amazon Prime makes speedy shipping and free returns easy as scratching your ass, which I believe is their new tagline. Whatever I pay for Amazon Prime every year, I get it back tenfold. For more specialized gear, I commonly go directly to B&H, which I'm sure most of you do as well. They truly have everything you could want or need for film, video, photography, all in one place. Their reviews are commonly done by qualified buyers versus John Q consumer, and their salespeople, should the need arise to chat with one, really speak the language. So it's a great place to shop for cinema gear. Around every holiday, they, like every other online reseller, start introducing their seasonal sales. And whatever B&H are spending on their online media, it's worth every nickel because there's not a single website that I visit that doesn't have some form or another of B&H banner flashing in my face. Not to mention the email blasts I get on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Green Week, Thirsty Thursday, Taco Tuesday, Halloween, Arbor Day, and the entire month of December. Let's just ease the throttle back a little bit, B&H. Deep discounts, massive savings, online specials, a celebration. You name it, they have it. But oh, B&H. You're being naughty with your pricing. Though they are truly one of my go-to online vendors, they are also the prime culprit in what I like to call the inflato sale. That's when a vendor, either in one shot or over the span of a few weeks, quietly raises the regular price of their item by about 30%. Then blam! Hits us with a 20% off sale. Unless you're paying close attention over a few weeks or months, you may actually think you're getting a really good deal, but the quick math will prove that you're actually paying 5% higher than the regular price if you had bought the item, say, a month ago. Now, B&H are not the only resellers doing this, but as they have a sale every six and a half minutes, they're the most obvious offenders. Years of working in advertising has given me a little advantage because I understand how advertisers use keywords and little tricks to sort of help fool you into thinking you're getting a great deal. For example, the attention-grabbing display line in a big fat font that reads 30% off everything in the store, accompanied by a nearly imperceptible up to. So you whisk away to the site only to find that everything over $10 is only about 6% off. But cables, tape, and lens caps and other horse shit are 30% off. The only retailers that are bigger dicks about doing this are any music equipment online sellers. I don't need 30% off a $4 plug adapter. 
I mean 30% off the $3,000 amplifier. Technically, you're telling the truth about your sale, but it's super deceptive and you're wasting all of our time. So cut the shit. In fact, online sellers, as we get closer to Christmas and you have your employees to think about, if you actually did a 20% off everything in your store with no up to or no exclusion list, that stupid list that says excluding these brands and it lists every single brand that you sell, you'd make a mint. You'd be having a very Merry Christmas. Bonuses for everyone because you'd sell the shit out of everything. Now I know some manufacturers have restrictions on price cutting, essentially forbidding online resellers from lowering the price too much. Well, fuck you too. Stop that shit. If a retailer is willing to go low with their price, let them do it. Yeah, yeah, fair competition, blah, blah, blah. Let them do it. So all that said, the best tip that I have for you has worked for me since I started shopping online a zillion years ago. Wherever possible, even though you want gear now, 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 make identical carts with several different resellers. Meaning, everything that you put in your cart on Amazon, put the same exact items in your cart on B&H or Adorama or anywhere else. Most of them let you save your cart as long as you're registered with them. Usually, and again, I don't think this applies just to cinema gear, it applies to anything, when you get the bug to buy something, it doesn't come on you all of a sudden. You've been thinking about making that purchase for a few weeks, maybe weighing the pros and cons of it. But cinema gear especially is not really an impulse buy. You don't wake up one morning and go, you know what? I think I'm gonna drop $11,000 on a camera today. That would be fun. So create your daydream wish list cart. That's stuff that you have no intention of buying right away, or maybe not even for a couple of years, but you would love to own all of that equipment. And once you have that cart filled, take a screen grab of it. Because as the seller starts to sneak their prices up slowly for their upcoming Inflato sale, the prices in your cart will also change. So as a reminder of what the price was when you actually added it to your cart, a screen grab is the best way to go. Now you might be saying, Grump, no matter what the price on my screen grab says, the price in the cart is what it is, so I'm stuck. True, but it gives you a couple of options. First, you can do a near instant comparison from vendor to vendor. The item in B&H's cart is this much, the item in Amazon's cart is this much, but more importantly, whatever goes up inevitably starts coming back down. Meaning a little patience and a little bit of your time could actually add up to some genuine savings. Not phony baloney sale prices, but real money back in your pocket. Keep a file of all of these screen grabs so that you can instantly pull them up and compare I actually put dates on mine so I know exactly when I added certain pieces of equipment. It sounds like a lot of work, but in the long run, I know when I'm actually getting a good deal and not getting fooled by one of these fake inflato sales. Again, if they raise the price by 30% and then do a 20% off sale, do some quick math. Keep a file, save yourself some genuine money. It's worked for me for a long time. If you have better ideas on how to do it, please comment below. I might start to implement it because I'm no genius and there's probably a better way of doing it. So vendors, you had a good run, but we're on to you. Take some advice from your old pal or possibly now your worst enemy, Grinchy McGrinch. Stop it. It's bananas. With Holiday Mania, this is another short episode so I don't have time to thank everyone that I normally do, but please check out any links below. And remember guys, I really appreciate it. If you dig the show, please like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed Hollywood Grump. Until next time, I genuinely hope that you and yours have a great holiday. Now get in your sleigh and dash the fuck out of my house.